Uh, I'm sorry to do this to you, our last speaker, also under the pump, but John Hudson is from uh, where I now live down in um, New South Wales, missing Queensland badly, but D John is the Director of E-Planning at the New South Wales Department of Planning Environment, and um, as he makes his way to the stage, he's going to speak to us about how this spatial digital technology can help to improve and sustain our governments, which is uh, working on the screen. So would you please make very welcome John Hudson. Where do I drive? Oh. Um, okay. Thanks very much. Yes, I've got, uh, I think I've got five minutes. Uh, but fantastic talks this morning, and, and uh, I hope you see this presentation that I'm about to give is sort of crystallising out about how you actually take the principles of open data, uh, treating uh, the community as citizens rather than consumers, and also breaking down the silos, being from New South Wales, and coming up and listening to other talks from Queensland. Fantastic. I think there's a, a real synergy in what government's trying to do across Australia, and hopefully you'll take that message away from my presentation, and I'll be as uh, swift as I can. Um, cities and, uh, and, uh, and regions are complex areas, and they've got, as we heard this morning, the increased populations are coming into the areas. Uh, they're complex systems to manage, and they're complex systems to plan for. The cities have a, an intimate uh, relationship with their geography, uh, not only uh, whether it be the ocean and the surrounding hills, but also there's an intimacy in terms of its relationship to the surrounding regions. In New South Wales, it's a, just a fact, like many other places, is there's increase in population. I think over uh, the projections for New South Wales over the next uh, 20 years, well, by 2031, there'll be an extra approximately 2 million people. Most of those people will gravitate towards the cities. That's where the opportunities are. How do we plan for that? Uh, when people are in these cities, this diagram shows a network of movement of households, uh, whether they be existing residents or new visitors to the city. Uh, it's a complex space, uh, and there's movements within the cities as there are uh, between cities. The New South Wales government has embraced a, uh, a digital planning system, and it's really about getting uh, faster ways to get the information that you need, whether it's for strategic planning purposes so that we can avoid some of the worst impacts of the floods and the, and the cyclones and the, and, the, and the natural hazards that uh, are, are present uh, there, or we can actually provide the services and information that allow people to get on with their lives and be able to do things like development applications, understand what's going on in their area. Over the last year, the, the last couple of years, the state government's made a significant investment in a digital planning system uh, and it recognises that it's, uh, it's planning for a 21st century, but importantly, it's as part of planning for a digital economy. And we've, we need to come a long way. Uh, we have come a long way in the last short while. This is all underpinned by the principles of open data uh, and also machine-to-machine -machine readable uh, information. And we look to develop the digital planning system over the next couple of years so much so that it actually becomes uh, the, the choice and we've made some important steps to actually put in, in law how a digital planning system would work in New South Wales. The next couple of slides are examples of, of some of the work that we've uh, been doing. Uh, this pack, I guess, will be available to, uh, to, uh, to the audience, so there's links on each one. Um, planning maps across the state uh, are, are available online through a planning viewer. Uh, we take a very much a user-centric view of it. You don't need to know the planning system. I think the planning system in New South Wales is incredibly complex, incredibly complex, and we're looking to simplify that. And the digitisation of a, of a system generally brings opportunity for simplification, and that's certainly happening uh, for us. But in this case, your starting point for navigating the planning system is to put in your address or a point of interest. And that becomes your reference point for understanding what the planning rules are that apply to your particular property or nearby. Uh, this isn't uh, uh, obviously spatial, but this is another example when people want to know, what can I do uh, to, build, to a building that I might own or I'm thinking of buying that doesn't need a development approval? It's called exempt development in, 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 in planning law parlance. And this is actually a, an interactive graphic that shows you the planning policy linked to your address. So again, you type in your address, it'll find your property, uh, it'll show you a generic diagram, of course, but it'll enable you to navigate the, uh, the, 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 the building, whether it's a residential building, a commercial building, or an industrial building, to give people very quick access to the legislation so that they can understand what they can and can't do without development approval. Um, we all live in the city, 
uh, well, we don't all live in the city. In fact, uh, I live in the city, but uh, we, we certainly there's a, a need for us to be aware of what's going on around us. And we have a lot of information that we've collected about de development activity, uh, basic uh, residential sustainability initiatives across the state. And what we've done is we've started to present that information openly as a means of uh, seeing what's going on around you. These dots uh, represent development uh, applications. You can drill into them and find out what's going on in your neighbourhood. But the, the pane on, on the, uh, the right-hand side is giving access to information about uh, planning data that we have, which describes what's going on in your local government area or in your suburb. Um, and to uh, just encourage our, 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 our folk in our Treasury, uh, we spoke before about the openness of uh, budget papers. New South Wales over the last two years has actually mapped its budget. So you can see where the investments are in services and information across the state. And I think this is really about getting to the point of how a digital uh, government and, and within that a digital planning system can actually support that type of engagement so that we get the uh, types of communities, uh, social and economic and environmental outcomes that we all uh, aspire to. Um, these e-planning tools are yet to be mandated, but we can see there's uh, quite an appetite for it. Along the bottom shows the uh, increasing uh, use of these tools that we've got online since we launched many of them in 2014. And the pie graph shows that many of the uh, people that are using the, these tools are, are, are return visitors. What they're using it for? Well, we don't know exactly, but what they are doing broadly is understanding the, the planning system and the opportunities that present in that. How do you make all this stick? Uh, it's easy to have these systems. How do you sustain them from a policy point of view? How do you sustain them from a financial point of view? In late 2014, the New South Wales planning legislation, the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act, was amended uh, and regulations come into place uh, from the 1st of July this year. And what it's fundamentally about is giving legal recognition to spatial data. The legislation now refers to a New South Wales planning portal and it refers to a New South Wales planning database as being the source of planning information for the state. We will transition away from the system that we've got at present, but the, uh, the objective is that the digital data will eventually become the legal truth and it brings in all the sorts of issues that we've just heard from the, uh, the previous speakers about copyright, about reliability of inf information, how the state actually harvests information from the local government and presents it back to the community in, in a way that supports a planning system. We also, uh, there was a presentation earlier on about spatial data infrastructures. Uh, what we've done in the Department of Planning is we've actually uh, put our hand up and said, under the spatial data infrastructure for the state, we will be responsible for and list the spatial data sets that we were responsible for. Might be uh, land use zoning, might be building heights, might be floor space ratio, whatever, statewide. They, they, were, they are the data that we're responsible for under legislation and they are the data that we will publish and make available freely on the internet. So our efforts should be seen as part of a digital government, we're part of the digital framework and we see that it's absolutely critical that we've, had the, we've got the legislation in place and we've got the policies and practices in place to make sure that this is for the long haul. This is about supporting uh, better planning outcomes across the state. And that was my uh, rather quick walk through uh, the uh, planning system uh, in New South Wales. I hope you take away from that that there's a lot of commonality in what we've heard all this morning uh, from a great bunch of presentations. This is an example, perhaps a case study, of how in the, uh, in the state of New South Wales, how we're looking to embrace a digital government and within that, how a digital planning system can give the types of outcomes that the community is looking for. Thank you.